Community of Hope, as you can see, we are continuing in our sermon series, God Will Take Care of You. It's a series that is connected to the 23rd Psalm, and as we're looking at the 23rd Psalm, uh, today I want to share on the subject more. Uh, that as we look, we've been studying the 23rd Psalm, and you all know 23rd Psalm. It started out in last week and the week before we dealt with the Lord as my shepherd, I shall not want. We dealt with, it makes me to lie down in green pastures, leads me beside the still waters. Today I want to look at that third verse. It says, restore my soul, leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Come on, I, I just want to pray and, and then be able to move. God, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this time that is yours. We ask, God, that you would bless, God, the words of my mouth to be a blessing to your people. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Uh, he restoreth my soul, uh, uh, leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Look, y'all, uh, we sat and we've talked about the 23rd Psalm. We've talked about how uh, the psalmist was uh, lifting up God um, as shepherd, was expressing and trying to help those in that time period understand some of the attributes of God, some of the ways that God has been moving in their life. Uh, and this kind of uh, illustration of the shepherd and said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Makes me uh, to lie down in green pastures and, and leads me beside the still water. In other words, it's taking care of me, it's sustaining me, it's, it's keeping me, um, it's feeding me, it's watering me. It's, and, and so in all of that, as we're looking at that, um, I, I want us to move a little bit further along our journey today. As we move a little bit further along our journey today, I, I think the thing that resonates for me the most today is this concept of more. Uh, th th that God wants more for us. God wants more for us. Uh, th th this concept and this thought that I just kept seeing as I looked at the scripture um, is that God wants to give us more. One of the first things I believe you can understand as we look at, at this scripture, especially that third verse where it says, it restore, He restoreth my soul, is that um, it's more, God wants more for you than just a meal and a bed. God wants more for you than just a meal and a bed. You, you know, when I look at the 23rd Psalm and, and I look at that second verse when it talked about, um, that, that, <laughs> and when it talked about that God will lead us. Um, that God will make us lie down in green pastures and lead us beside the still waters, I realized that God was sustaining. The shepherd's job is to make sure that the sheep are taken care of, that the sheep eat. But what got me, what catches me about this third verse is it allowed me to see that it was more than just sustaining. Uh, it, and the challenge for many of us is that the way we look at God is as a sustainer, a God that will take care of us, a God that will keep us. And, and I can appreciate that and I understand the need for that. Uh, but this scripture shows uh, that God is doing more than sustaining because the shepherd uh, does not just feed them, not just take care of them. Uh, but it, this gets really wild for me because I never pictured a shepherd doing this. Uh, but in the scripture, uh, the, the, the writer says, he restoreth my soul restores my soul. In, in other words, the very inner part of my life, that the, the very fabric, that the, 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 the shepherd uh, restores the soul. Now, now, I want to tell you that that's a bit more than just taking care. That's just a bit more than keeping, but that is restoration. And somebody today uh, that I want you to know that restoration is available to you. God does just not need to sustain you, to keep you, to allow everything to kind of keep going as it is. Uh, but, but I love the fact that God can restore to you everything that you've lost, that God can restore to you what you've been missing on the inside. And, and when I talk about restoration, I, I'm not necessarily just talking about kind of a restoration of what you've lost uh, uh, from a, a physical and a tangible standpoint. But I'm talking about God can restore your soul, that God can restore your peace, that God 
can restore your joy. Someone today knows what I'm talking about. Someone today knows that in the midst of this pandemic, you've lost some things. Uh, you've lost some things physically. You've lost some things tangibly. You've lost some things emotionally. Uh, but if you're honest with yourself, you've lost some stuff on the inside. Uh, that I must admit that myself personally as your pastor, uh, that one of the reasons I had to go away this summer was because I had lost some stuff on the inside. I thank God for my brother, Reverend Bill, who is not just a great brother, but an extremely uh, uh, incredible assistant pastor. And one of the things he had to remind me was, he said, this summer you have to take your vacation. He said, because if you look back over it because of the pandemic and because of some situations the year before, you haven't taken a vacation in three years. I was moving, I was doing the work, I was being sustained, I was being able to get through. But the reality was uh, that on the inside, I was exhausted. Uh, that I was able to handle the work of the day. I was able to feed folks. I was able to bury folks. I was able to pastor folks. But on the inside, I was hurting. On the inside, I was exhausted. On the inside, I was burnt out. That I was being sustained. That I was having my daily needs met. Uh, but on the inside, there was something that was missing. I needed restoration. And I want to thank God that as I was able to go away this summer, as I was able to go several different places, whether it was to Ghana, whether it was to the Caribbean, whether it, it, it was um, to some other locations, uh, that as I was able to go away, I was able to just be quiet, sit with God, and let the shepherd restore me. That is the blessing of being uh, able to be put by the still waters. That is the blessing of being able to lie down in green pastures. It's not just about, I'm going to be sustained. No, no, no. It's about restoration. And somebody, you've been fighting a hard fight. Somebody, you've been fighting a hard fight, but you've been making it. Somebody, uh, you've been fighting a hard fight, but God's been keeping you. Somebody, you've been fighting a hard fight, and God's been sustaining you. But today, I've come with the word that it's more than just a meal and a bed. That's right. That it's not just about keeping you. It's not just about sustaining you. That God wants to do more for you than to help you just get through tomorrow, to just get through today. But God wants to restore you on the inside, that God wants to reinvigorate you, that God wants to do a work on the inside of you uh, that can be able to boost you in ways you haven't been boosted before. I, I've come by today to let you know the scripture says what? He restoreth my soul that the shepherd, I, 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 I never thought about a sheep getting restored, but the psalm writer understood that as I write this, I need you to understand that God's role in your life is not just about sustaining, but it's about restoring. It's not just about keeping you in the moment moment, but it's about restoring you uh, on the inside uh, so that you can walk and talk and live and grow at, at a higher level, that, that, that God wants to restore you. Somebody, that should be your shout right there. Somebody, you know, if you're honest with yourself, that you're tired. You know, if you're honest with yourself, you're weary, you're wounded, you're worn. Uh, but I found in God a resting place. And, 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 and in that, that God can restore your soul. Second thing I want you to understand um, is that there was an old song, 1988, 1988, Eric B. and Rakim came out with their second album. It was the album that followed their paid in full album that was the bomb.com, 1988. They had a single that was also the name of the album, and it was called Follow the Leader. And on this song that Rakim, you heard him in 100 bars of hip hop mastery I would lead us along this a lyrical journey that got to the chorus and the chorus was just the words follow the leader oh I, I know somebody from the old school knows what I'm talking about young people that are watching this is black history and and, and but follow the leader and, and that's my second point is follow the leader the the scripture says what that, that he leads us in the path of righteousness that God leads us in the past 
of righteousness. That, that one of the things you understand about the shepherd is it is the shepherd's job to lead the sheep along the journey. It's the shepherd's job to take the sheep to where they need to go. The sheep don't know the direction that they need to go. The sheep don't know the destination they need to get to. It is the shepherd's job. Uh, to And the scripture says that what the guy leads us in the path of righteousness. Now, I, I need you to understand and be clear uh, that if God leads you in the path of righteousness, it also means there are some paths that are not righteous. It also means there's some paths that are not good for you. See, a shepherd would lead the sheep along the path in which there was the least danger, lead the sheep along the path in which it was the safest, lead the sheep along the path which was headed in the right direction towards the right destination that would be to the best advantage of the sheep. Uh, but other paths would take sheep in a different direction. Other paths may take sheep in a dangerous path. Other uh, paths may take sheep on a rockier trajectory. Other paths may take sheep in, in, into areas that are not good for the sheep. And, and, and the shepherd knows the difference in the past. And somebody today, I, I want to make sure that you understand uh, that God leads us in the path of righteousness, but you've got to follow the leader. It's a horrible thing when a sheep doesn't want to follow the shepherd. It's a horrible thing when a sheep wants to go their own way when the shepherd is trying to take them in a different direction. Uh, that's how sheep get lost. That's how sheep uh, end up in danger because they don't follow the leader. Uh, but the thing I love about the fact that it says that God uh, leads us in the path of righteousness is it does not say that God shows us the path of righteousness. There's a difference between somebody leading you and somebody showing you. Let, let me help you. I remember um, sometimes you can go somewhere and you can need directions. You can need directions and, and a person can uh, sit and they can be where they are and you can ask them how to get to a certain location. Now, th this is what I realized the difference was in the north and the south. I remember as a young man, uh, early driving, I was up north, I was in, in, in a DMV or in New York and I was asking somebody how to get to a certain place, didn't know how to get to where I was going. The young people that was back before Waze and back before GPS and you had maps and if you didn't have a map you had to ask somebody how to get somewhere i'd ask somebody how to get somewhere and they say oh man man what you do is and and they usually did just like this they usually bent over to you and says what you do is that you go up three blocks that you make a right three blocks up and then you go up two blocks and at the McDonald's you make a left. Uh, then you go over three more blocks um, and at the Burger King uh, you, you kind of veer kind of towards the right. It ain't a full right, but you kind of veer kind of towards the right. And then, uh, you, and, and, and then at the roundabout over by Miss Mabel's house, you're going to know her house because it's got the yellow shutters and, and the green fence. It's a crazy looking house that at her house then you go straight you go straight for a bit and then by the time you get about three quarters of a mile down the road you're going to see it and it's going to be right there you're going to see it it's going to be right there all right all right take care man and i'd be trying to remember all of that writing it down boom, 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 to try to now sometimes i might get there but that person showed me they told me the way to get to where i needed to go but sometimes I remember the first time I went to Atlanta, it blew my mind. I hadn't been down south like that and it blew my mind because I, I, at first everybody would wave at you. Hey, how you doing? I'd be like, who is you waving at? But they would wave at you. They were just so nice down south. They had what they called southern hospitality. And I remember being down there and asking, hey, asking the person if they knew how to get to a certain location. And the person said, yeah, I know how to get there. Follow me. And they hopped in their car and then drove and I followed them to get to the location. It, there's a difference between somebody showing you the path and somebody leading you along the path. You see, if somebody shows you the path or they tell you the path, uh, th then, th then you have to figure it out. But if you get lost, you just get lost. But if somebody leads you along the path, and that means they're on the journey with you. And the thing I love about the scripture is it says that the shepherd, what? That God leads us 
in the paths of righteousness, along the paths of righteousness. In other words, that God doesn't just point it out, but God walks the path with you. And if you'll follow God along the journey, that means that if something pops up along the journey that's a challenge, that God can deal with it along the journey. If something unexpected comes up along your path of righteousness, then God can protect you in the middle of it, and God can make a way in the middle of it, and God but you've got to follow the leader. I, I love the fact uh, that God lead me. The old saints should say, lead me, guide me along the way. Lord, if you lead me, I shall not stray. Lord, let me walk each, each day with thee. Lead me, O oh Lord, lead me. And, and that needs to be our hymn. That needs to be our song. Lead me, guide me along the way. Lord, if you lead me, I will not stray. In other words, if you lead me, I'm not going to go a different direction. If you lead me, just because they call me over here doesn't mean I'm going to go over here. But I want to go along these paths of righteousness. The third thing, and I'm up out of here, y'all, is you've got to understand that it's not just about me. It's not just about me. Scripture, remember, says what the, he restores my soul, leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Now, uh, what catches me uh, about the scripture is it shows that God gives us attention with intention. That's right. God gives us attention with intention. What do you mean, Reverend? Uh, the, 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 in other words, uh, that God leads us along the path of righteousness for his namesake, his namesake, uh, it, that your success means something to God. Your success means something to God. And the Bible says that God is leading you for God's namesake. In other words, so that God's name will be made great. In other words, so that God will be shown to be a person of God's word, that, that God's reputation is connected to God's leading of you, that God is leading you along the path of righteousness uh, because God wants to show uh, that God's name is good. And, and, and one of the things that you often hear um, in the world is there would be more Christians if it wasn't for Christians. It would be more Christians if it wasn't for Christians. People would think more highly of God if it wasn't for the people of God. That, that, that more people would go to church if it wasn't for the people in the church. And, and, and what I realize is that we have uh, what I would call a branding issue. Now, I don't want to just limit God to a brand. I'm just talking kind of secular language right now. Uh, but, but, but we have what I call a branding or if I can break it down for you right now, we have a McDowell's issue. That's right. We have a McDowell's issue. Anybody, if you've ever watched the movie Coming to America, that you will understand uh, that the, the gentleman uh, in the movie um, who Eddie Murphy w w was trying to date his daughter, uh, the, the, Eddie Murphy first worked at a restaurant called McDowell's. Now, it looked like McDonald's. It had all of the colorings of McDonald's. It had uh, arches like McDonald's. It, it had a, a food that was like McDonald's, but they would just change some of the words on the food, etc., so that they didn't get in a copyright issue with McDonald's. It was called McDowell's. And, and some of us are some McDowell's Christians. Uh, that some of us are some, that, 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 that we act like we're the brand, but we're really not the brand. That we act like we're about it, but we're really not about it. And so I believe that the Christian church uh, has an issue because we've got some McDowell's Christians. We've got folks, uh, you, you know, we've got folks that talk about being pro-life, uh, but yet they don't believe black lives matter. We've got some folks that can say all lives matter uh, uh, and, and the same breath, but not be concerned about Julius Jones being on death row for a fraudulent charge and, and, and not be fighting for someone's life. The, 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 we've got Christians who, who talk about Christianity, uh, but their lives are not Christ-like, but, but not just on the political spectrum, but I'm talking about in our own lives. Many times, the fact of the matter is that, that, that we don't give God as great a name as we should, that we don't give God a great name because we end up on the wrong path, that because we end up straying from the path of righteousness and on the path of 
foolishness, even though we're claiming God to be our leader, we end up in paths in which it brings a bad name to the kingdom of the Lord. That, that's right. That's right. They, they tell the truth to shame the devil. Be, be honest with yourself. That there are times in which uh, our testimony ends up being invalidated by our actions. There are times in, in, in which our, our testimony of God's goodness uh, ends up being called into question uh, because of how we treat people, how we talk about people, how we misuse people, how we abuse people, how we react in situations. But I've come by today to tell somebody uh, that, 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 that God leads us on the path of righteousness for God's name's sake, so that God's name can ring out in the world and people can realize how good God is by how good God has been to you. And, and, and so my, my question for you is what do people think about Christianity by your lifestyle? What do people say about God as a result of the way you're living? That's right. You, you, you say you're a Christian. You, you say you're a follower of Christ. You say you're a believer. What do the people around you think about God as a result of the paths you're on? And, and, and I would tell you that if you have to hang your head in shame, that now is the time to readjust your path and get back to following God on the paths of righteousness. Now is the time to readjust and to follow the, the leader. Now is the time to understand that God is not just leading you uh, so that you can blow up. God is leading you so that others can see God through you. There's a song, there's a hymn and a song that says, in my life, be glorified. And that needs to be all of our hymn. That needs to be all of our song. That needs to, to, to be what, what we share with everybody. God, in my life, be glorified. God, in the things that I do, God, be glorified. God, on the path that I'm on, be glorified. God, let people look at me and see you. The old saints used to sing a song at home going services that said, may the works I've done speak for me. And, and, and I can understand that. And that makes sense. That is, try, <coughs> that is trying to say, May the works I've done, may the efforts I've given speak for me in such a way to, uh, but, but I would say, and I would give another verse of that song to say, may the works I've done speak for God. That, that may the works I've done, not that my works are so great, but may the life I live speak for God. May the service I give speak for God. That, that may God's name be made high in the earth because of my lifestyle. Let my lifestyle not be a McDowell's Christian lifestyle in which I'm kind of claiming Christianity, but I'm not really living Christianity. But let my lifestyle be true to what we say we are. Let my lifestyle be true to scripture. Let my lifestyle uh, be uh, me following God along the paths of righteousness. For God's name's sake, let God's name be glorified in my life. And, and, and I promise you, and I believe this in all of my heart, that if you will follow God along the path of righteousness, uh, the theme of this whole sermon series is God will take care of you. God will take care of you if you let God, if you'll follow, if you'll get with the plan. If you'll follow directions, if you'll work what God has put in your hands, God will take care of you. Please don't run away from God when God is doing so much to lead you. God's not just showing you the way. God is right there with you, leading you along the way. Somebody's going to say, well, Reverend, it's too hard. The paths of righteousness are too rough. I can't do it all by myself. But I just told you, God's not showing you the way. God's leading you along the way. And if God is leading you in the path of righteousness, that means that when you need help, God is right there to help you. That means when you get turned around, God is right there to help you get readjusted and get things moving right in the right direction. God will take care of you. My brothers and my sisters, that's our word for today. 
It is my prayer. It is my hope that you can really take that into your heart and be able to one, be restored two follow the leader, but three have God be glorified in your life. Now, if you've never accepted Jesus as the Lord and savior of your life, we want to give you that opportunity today. If you've never made Jesus your choice, we want to give you that opportunity today. That if you've never said, I give my heart to Christ, we want to give you that opportunity today. The Bible says that God loved the world so much that God gave God's only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I, I love that scripture. And y'all hear me say this almost every Sunday. Because it doesn't say, for God so loved the church, doesn't say, for God so loved the saints. God so loved the world. I don't care who you are. We say this at Community of Hope every Sunday. We're the community of hope where everyone has a chance. We don't care who you are, what you've done, or who you did it with. We don't care if you did it last night or woke up doing it this morning. But when you get in the house of the Lord, you're in the right place at the right time to become all that God has called you to be. And we believe that God's got a blessing with your name slam on it. Look, if you've never accepted Christ, today is your day. All you've got to do is give your heart to the Lord. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If you want to give your heart to Christ today, it didn't say that you might be saved. It said you shall be saved. It didn't say you could be saved, it said you shall be saved. If you want to give your heart to Christ today, just acknowledge Jesus as the Lord and Savior of your life. Died on the cross, got raised from the dead. You could be saved. If you want to give your heart to Christ today, today is your day and this is your moment. We want to pray with you. Won't you just let us know you want to make that decision to give your heart to Christ. Just text uh, to the number 474747, text HOPE DECISION to 474747 or click the link right there in the chat, right there in the chat, click the link and we just want to follow up with you, get information, with you get you plugged in to what the Lord is doing here at Community of Hope. Or even if you're already saved, if you need a church home, text HOPE DECISION to 474747. We want to get plugged in with you. Or if you want to rededicate your faith, just text Hope Decision to 474747. Now look, if you decide to do any of those, I want to pray with you, but I want you to repeat after me right where you are. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. It'll be my words, but your faith. Say, God, come on, say it loud than that. Say, God, I thank you. I thank you for Jesus who died for me and you raised from the dead, that I could be saved. Please forgive me for my sins. I don't want to live that way anymore. And right now, I acknowledge Jesus as the Lord and the Savior of my life. I thank you that he was crucified raised from the dead to save me from my sins. So today I want to live the way you want me to live and be the person you've called me to be. I thank you that I'm saved, got a church home, rededicated my faith. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. And amen. Now, look, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, either to give your life to Christ or to join this church or rededicate your faith, uh, click the link right there in the chat or type hope decision, one word, to 474747. We want to get plugged in with you. We want to connect with you. We believe that God will get the glory out of your story. Now, it's time for communion. I'm so excited about what God's about to do as we. Uh, commemorate and celebrate the sacrament of the church. Or you can get your communion uh, stuff prepared, whether it's wafers or crackers or bread, juice, water, whatever it is. Get it prepared right now. And after this selection, we'll have our communion service. God bless you.